Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. We have a saying here at the Wayward Outreach that once you watch once, you're now part of the family. We know that God is ready to do something amazing in your life, so check out today's service. Good morning, everyone. I am so glad that you tuned in this morning. Why don't we go ahead and start off this morning with some prayer. Can you just stand up right where you're at? And let's welcome God's presence into our room right now. Father, we ask you, Lord, to come into our room right now. We welcome your Holy Spirit, your presence. We are ready to study your word and help us to understand it and apply it to our lives. I pray right now for everyone that's hurting or maybe sick, that today, Father, you'd heal them. Those that are living a life of discouragement and they're we just had a tough week, I ask you, Lord, to comfort them and strengthen them right now. Those that maybe even have a broken heart, heal their broken heart. I'm asking you, Lord, speak to us today. I'm asking you, Lord, speak through me today that it will not be my words, but your words. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So glad you've tuned in. Today we're going to be talking about the key to living a fulfilled life. You know, they just did a survey and they're finding out that Americans are unhappier than they ever have been. And I kind of see it in society. People are angry, they're upset, we're divided, our families are falling apart, our society is falling apart. And I believe we're all searching for this sense of fulfillment. And we've tried drugs and we've tried drinking and we've tried partying. We've we've tried buying things. Maybe if I got a little more money or if I switch partners and I got a different wife or a different husband. But after we search and we search all over, this we find out we're still not fulfilled. Now the word fulfillment means this. Fulfillment is a feeling of happiness, satisfaction, and peace. God is concerned And he wants us to live a life with satisfaction, fulfillment, and some peace. He really does. Jesus came, and the Bible says in John 10, 10, that the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I've come to give life in abundance. Now, there's a lifestyle that God has for us that we cannot find in this world. And he says, I've come to give you that life. This fulfilled life is possible. And there's one major key to live in a fulfilled life. And you're saying, Pastor, what is that key to live in a fulfilled life? Because if we could discover this key, we could unlock people all over the world because every single person is looking to find happiness, find joy, find peace, and we can find it. And there's a key to finding peace. And you're probably thinking, Pastor, what's the key? This is the key, the presence of God. The presence of God is the present is the spirit of God and we can experience have you ever experienced the presence of God I remember one time it was years back that my daughter was was really sick Abriana my oldest daughter and, and she was super sick to the point that she couldn't walk and and I told my wife I go we really got to take her to the hospital and she started getting bumps underneath her arms and And the next day, we were ready to take her to the hospital. But that night, something unique really happened. The presence of God invaded my room. That night, I I woke up that night just speaking in tongues. And it's like something that never happened to me. And I felt a peace that I really couldn't explain. But God already knew that that day I'd get the worst news I've ever received, that my little daughter would have cancer. And it was the presence of God that got me through that moment. We need the presence of God or we just fall apart. So I wanna tell you some things about the presence of God. First, two facts about the presence of God. Fact number one, we were created to live in God's presence. We were created to live in God's presence. When God created Adam and Eve, this is what he did. He put them right there, Adam and Eve, in in the middle of his presence. Look at this scripture. It's in Genesis 2.15. It says, the Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. And you might be thinking, what does Eden mean? And this is what Eden means. It's a very simple definition. The place of God's presence and the fullness of his provision. 
So when God created man, he put him in the optimum atmosphere, the place that he could be fulfilled. Every single need will be met. And that's where he placed them. And all Adam and Eve needed to do was to make sure that they continued to maintain that relationship, maintain the presence of God, value the presence of God. And they would continue to live a fulfilled life and all their needs would be met. But this is what happened. The scripture, as he told them, be in the garden, you could be in the garden. He says, look, you could tend to watch, tend to watch over the garden. But in verse 16, Genesis 2, 16 says, but the Lord God warned them, you may freely eat of the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat of the fruit of its fruit, you are sure to die. And the scripture was saying, look, you're in my presence. I place you in Eden, the place of my presence. And to stay here, all you need to do is make sure you don't eat of that tree. I, I'm giving you everything you need. You don't need what's in that tree. But you know what Adam and Eve did? They ate from that tree. And did they physically die? Well, later on, they physically died. But the death that, they, that God was talking about here was spiritual death. They'd be separated from God. They'd be, really, they were kicked out of Eden. And the scripture says, after they ate of the tree, they were removed from the garden, and God put angels as guards of Eden so they wouldn't go back in the garden. They were kind of excommunicated from the presence of God. And that's why God hates sin so much. Because you know what sin does? It separates us from God's presence. And when we're separated from God's presence, we're separated from everything that's good. The more we get involved in a life of sin, and I don't know what tree you've gone to to satisfy you. There's some trees that people are going to, which maybe could be drugs or, or drinking, extramarital affair. Whatever your sin is, it could be pornography. You're going to that tree. And God hates that tree that you're going to because as long as you're going to that tree, you're not coming to him. It's separating you from God. So Adam and Eve were separated from God. They ate of that tree. But I got good news for you. There's another fact that God wants to let us know. Fact number one, you were created to be in God's presence. But there's some good news here that we can be restored into God's presence. This is a fact. God's presence is essential for our fulfillment and well-being. He's, he's making his presence, his spirit, available for our well-being. And in Psalms Psalm 16, 11, it says this, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. God is saying, in my presence, Adam and Eve lost the presence of God. I got some good news. We can gain access to the presence of God again. And I'm going to show you how to gain access to the presence of God. The fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. Yesterday while I was on the streets and I said, Pastor, why were, you, uh, why were you on the streets? Well, God told me, I usually study before, you know, I study before I come up here and, and bring a sermon. And I usually go in my room and study or my office here at the church and study. And God gave me some really clear instructions. This is what he said. I want you to study on the streets. So what I did was I went to Target and I bought myself a table and a, and a little chair. And this is where I set up my office. I set up my office on baseline. Now, the reason I set up my office in Baseline, because Baseline is one of the worst streets in San Bernardino. And if I was going to study anywhere and be a light anywhere, it was going to be right there. And as I was watching people walk by, I could see the emptiness, the lack of fulfillment, the depression, the anger, the pain. I could see it in their eyes. Well, there was a young lady that ended up walking right by, and as she walked by, her name was Stanquisha. And as she walked by, I go, hi. And she just turned around, she goes, hi. And I, I go, I'm just here to pray for anybody. Do you need prayer? And she says, well, not really. She kind of walked away. Then she came back to the table. She goes, yeah, I need prayer. This is what I need prayer for. I have a bad attitude. <laughs> like I always have a bad attitude. I go, okay, we could pray for that. And I asked Tanquisha, have you ever gone to church? She goes, I've never gone to church. I go, Tanquisha, do you know what Jesus has done for you? 
And she goes, no, I've never heard of what, that Jesus has done anything for me. And I began to share the good news with Stanquisha. And as I began to talk to her about Jesus, she just stopped me in the middle of the conversation. And I've never had anybody just stop me in the middle of the conversation and say what she said. She said, do I look dead to you? And I looked at her, I go, well, why are you asking me that question? And she goes, because when I look in the mirror, I see death. I feel like I'm dead. I feel like I've already died. And I told Stanquisha, I go, Stanquisha, I go, what you just said is really, really deep. And what she was describing, this is what she was describing, she was describing her spiritual condition. She realized that there's something missing, that she's not alive. She's not living a fulfilled life or a full life. And I told her, I know exactly the problem. You need the presence of God in your life. That's what's missing. And when you get the presence back in your life, it's going to change your attitude. It's going to fill you with God's joy. And you're going to finally find fulfillment in your life. And I said, Stanquisha, are you ready to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And she finally, after we talked, she said, yes. She gave her life to Jesus right there in the middle of baseline. And this is what she experienced. God's presence is essential for our fulfillment and well-being. She experienced the fullness of joy. And she experienced the pleasures forevermore. In God's presence is what we're looking for. You're not going to find it in a drug. You're not going to find it in a friend. You're not going to find it in a thing. Things will make us happy for a while, but they're not going to fulfill us. There's only one thing, and it's the key to fulfillment, and that's the presence of God. You were created to have a relationship with God. And until you have a relationship with God, everything in your life is going to lack satisfaction. You're going to still find an emptiness in it. So God wants to restore, this is what he wants, his presence, or he wants to restore Eden back in our lives. Remember, God created Adam and Eve and he put them in Eden. What is Eden? The place of God's presence. And he wants to restore his presence back in our, li in our lives. Isaiah 51, 3 says this, the Lord will comfort Israel again. And this is like all God is saying is, the Lord will strengthen you again. The Lord will come to you again. He comes to you. And he says, and have pity on her ruins. Her desert will blossom like Eden, her barren wilderness like the garden of the Lord, joy and gladness will be found there. Songs of thanksgiving will fill the air. It almost sounds like a rap. It says, it says, joy will be found there and songs of thanksgiving will fill the air. And it's describing a group of people that have ruined their lives and they're like in a desert condition, nothing's growing. You know what that means? They're not prospering. They're not moving ahead. They feel like they're absolutely stuck emotionally, in life, financially, health-wise. I'm stuck. I don't see how I could get out of this thing. Well, God sees their pain, their ruin, their lack of productivity, their lack of production, lack of being fruitful, and he has pity and mercy on them. And you know what he does? He comes to them. And this is what he says, you will blossom like Eden. What I'm going to do is restore your prosperity back to you. I'm going to restore your gladness and your joy back to you. How do we get restored? The presence of God. God has, it's his intention from the beginning that you be in his presence. And you know what that means? He's going to do everything he can to reach you with this good news that you can be fulfilled through allowing God's presence back in your life. Well, Stanquisha found the presence of God. While I was on the streets, I ran into another guy. His name's John Johnson. And he's a senior citizen. And he was walking by with a beer in his hand and and he walked by the table, and I said, hello. He, and he basically asked me, what are you doing here? I said, well, I'm just here to love people and pray for them. I'm studying the Bible, and I'm a pastor of a church, and I just decided to pray out here and study. And John Johnson says, you know what? I need to get my life right with God. Something's missing. I'm tired of this drinking. I'm tired of womanizing. I need change. So I talked to John Johnson for a few minutes. John Johnson rededicated his life to the Lord. 
John Johnson made a decision to go in to our men's home. And I haven't checked up. Hopefully he's in there today. But this is what God does. What he was saying is, I'm doing what I want to do, but I'm not fulfilled. I'm empty. I'm drinking this beer. I'm doing my own thing. But there's something radically missing in my life. I don't, I, there's something missing. And after I prayed with him, he said, my kids are going to be so happy that I've made the decision to follow God and get my life back on track with God. So God wants to restore his presence in our lives. So fact number one was we were created to live in God's presence. How do we know that? When God created man, he put him in Eden. What is Eden? The place of God's presence. Fact number two, God's presence is essential for our fulfillment and well-being. That means if we're going to have, we're going to be fulfilled, it's the one thing you're going to need is the presence of God. And I'm going to give you now three conditions for the presence of God to be restored and maintained in our lives. Now, just because we want the presence of God in our lives does not mean that we'll experience the presence of God in our lives. There's conditions for God's presence to be restored and maintained in our lives. You know what that means? Is that we could experience the presence of God on a daily basis and a moment-by-moment -moment basis as long as the conditions are right. And the first condition, just three conditions, the first condition is Jesus. We must place our faith in Jesus. Jesus is the only way back. That means, I remember, you got to remember when you were a child and you had all these dreams and visions of great things you wanted to accomplish. Do you remember when, when you were a child and you used to dream big? And then this would happen as you just began to do your life your way on your own terms. The dreams died. It was like a light just started becoming more and more dim. You found yourself hopeless or maybe depressed. You never thought that you'd be addicted to something and, and you thought you could stop and you told yourself, I'll stop anytime I want, but yet it's five years later, 10 years later, and you still haven't stopped. And you thought, you know, after all the pain and suffering you've gone through, that you, know, you could overcome, but you're finding yourself angry, you're finding yourself depressed. And, and, and when you get angry and you hurt people, because hurting people hurt people, you start thinking, I'll never do that again. I never want to hurt them again. And you find yourself hurting them again. Well, this is what you need. You need the presence of God to set you free. You need the presence of God to make you whole. You need the presence of God to change your heart. You need the presence of God to give you joy. You need the presence of God to give you peace. You need the presence of God to give you the power to overcome the challenges that you're facing today. And the only way back into the presence of God is Jesus Christ. Our church is based on this scripture in John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the only way to God and the real truth and the real life, no one comes to the Father but through me. Jesus makes it simple. The presence of God is missing. You need God back in your life. And Jesus says, you want to get back to God? You want to get back to that place of fulfillment and joy that God created to live in? Well, there's one way. I am the way. And I'm the only way to get back to the Father and experience the life that you've been searching for. Stop searching. Jesus is the answer. Jesus suffered and, and he died for our sins in order to bring us back to God. That's why he suffered and died, to bring us back to God. Look at this other scripture in 1 Peter 3.18. It says, Christ died once for our sins. Did he die for his sins? No, he paid the price. Remember Adam and Eve sinned, and if they sinned, they would die, surely die, and they were separated from God. Our sins are separated from God, separated us from God. But Jesus paid the price so our sins will be removed, we'd be cleansed, and be able to restore our relationship with God. So Christ died for our sins. An innocent person died for those who are guilty. Christ did this to bring you to God. Now, Sin has consequences. And Jesus said, all the consequences for the bad decisions you've made, this is what I did over 2,000 years ago. I paid the price for every single one of the consequences of your sin. And this is why I did it, to bring you back to God, to bring you back to that place you were created to live in the presence of God. And until we do that, and we... we place our faith in Jesus, we're going to be empty. 
We're going to be angry. We're going to be depressed. We're just going to go around in circles. Because the only thing that we're missing, and, and we got to get it, is the presence of God. And it happens one way, through Jesus Christ. Condition number two is this. Very simple. Do his will. Doing his will. Now, well, in God's will, in the middle of his will, is his presence. God will never show you, you should do this, or command you to do this in Scripture, or give you instructions without leading you into his presence. Yesterday, like I told you, I was on the streets, and I experienced something really awesome, just like I experienced that night right before I got the bad news that my daughter had cancer. The presence of God gave me a supernatural peace to get through that challenge. Well, yes, yesterday while I was on the streets, I experienced that same peace again. And I was on baseline. It was within a few minutes that I was there. There was a, a, a police chase, a high-speed chase, and, and a car crashed into a wall. And there was a young man being arrested, and he was hurt. And, and I was sitting there with all this chaos. On my right hand, there was a prostitute, and, and there were homeless people walking by, and some people were arguing and fighting. It was right in the middle of all that chaos. And while I was sitting there in the middle of the chaos, I just said to myself, I have so much peace right here, right now. I have more peace in that, that street than I would have had anywhere in the world. And they say, but why would I have more peace right there on the streets more than any place in the world? I'll tell you why. Because God told me to go on the streets. He goes, I want you to study on the streets. Just be a light. This is what happened while I was on that street, on those streets. And I said yes. And I went to Target and bought myself a table. I got myself a little chair, a little bottle of water. And I sat there and I began to study. This is what happened. I was in the will of God. And while I was in the will of God, this is what I experienced. The presence of God. The peace of God. God's not giving us instructions to put a burden on us. He's given us instructions to lead us to that place of fulfillment, to lead us to our purpose, to lead us to his presence. See, with God's will comes the king and his kingdom. With God's will, I'll say it again, comes the king and his kingdom. You can't do God's will without getting the king. Look at, look at Matthew, in Matthew 6.10, it says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Look what the scripture is saying. He's saying, when God's will is done, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Where God's will is done, this is what happens, we experience the presence of God or the kingdom of God, the power of God, the peace of God, the strength of God, the, the eternal life of God. This is what we need. Simple. Let's just do God's will. Doing God's will or obeying God is the same thing as walking with God. Have you heard, ever heard someone, I'm walking with God? Well, this is how you walk with God. You, you give reverence to his word and you obey him. And when you're obeying God, this is what you're doing. You're walking with him step by step. And when you're walking with him, this is what you're experiencing. You're experiencing the presence of God. You're walking with the Prince of Peace. You're walking with the King of Kings. You're walking with the Creator of the universe. You're walking with your source of wisdom. You're walking with your source of joy. You're walking with God. How do we walk with God? Obeying God. There was a man in the Bible that the Bible specifically said he walked with God and he was no more. That means there was a guy that took a literal walk with God. His name was Enoch and he disappeared and went home to heaven. He walked all the way to heaven. Look what the scripture says in Genesis 5, 24. And in reverent fear, fear and obedience, Enoch walked with God. And he was not found among men because God took him away to be home with him. Just think about that. So he takes a walk and God has an idea. I'm taking him home with me. You know what that means? Is that God wants friendship. The greatest thing, the greatest creation that God, that God did was man. And why did he create us to be like him? This is why he created us to be like him. So he could have a relationship with us here on earth and for eternity. Well, Enoch took that walk with God. How did he walk with God? Rev giving, reverently obeying God. So every time God's giving you instructions 
and you follow them, this is what you're going to experience, the presence of God, just like I did on the streets. I was out there experiencing the presence of God because I did what he asked me to do. And every time you don't experience the presence, you feel, man, I'm empty, I'm lost. I think a really great place to start if you're unfulfilled and you're empty and depressed is ask yourself, am I following God's instructions? And it might be as simple as this, go to church. Simple. It might be something simple like that. Go to church or read your word or forgive them. Forgive them. Don't hold on to the grudge. And you say, I'm not going to forgive them. I'm going to hold on to the grudge. This is what's happening. As long as you're not forgiving them, you're not walking in God's will. And this is what you won't experience. You won't experience the presence of God. In God's will, simple instructions, God says, just obey it, and you'll experience my power. Condition number three, and this is the last condition, gathering with other believers. See, we can't, God has set this up, and, and we see this in Matthew 18, 20, I'll read it in a second, but he set this up that when we come together, when we come together as believers, this is what's going to happen. We will experience his presence. We'll experience his power we'll experience his love. And Matthew 18, 20 gives us a promise. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. While I was on the streets yesterday, people would come up to me and, and ask me questions. And, and there were some members of the Way World Outreach that saw me as they were driving down baseline and they, they whipped their car around and they stopped, Pastor, is that you? I go, yes. And there was a mother and a daughter that stopped, and, and they really had a tough, tough week. They had two major car accidents in their family. Um, the police came over to inspect their home, and, and they, their dog attacked the police officers. They had to end up shooting the dog on that day. The daughter, one of the daughters and the mother, you know, got in a little fight and argument. It was just a tough, tough week. Five days of just complete misery. And she just stopped there. And, and she stopped there on the street and, and she said, Pastor, can you pray with me? I've had a tough week. And this is what we did. Wherever two or three are gathering in his name, he is there in their midst. We began to pray right there on the sidewalk of Baseline. The presence of God came so strong down on that sidewalk. Why? Because wherever two or three are gathered in his name, he is there among them. And, and her, da her daughter, probably 13 years old, 14 years old, she just began to cry too. The presence of God was right there on the street. I ran into another young man. Now he stopped and, and he was struggling and he was hurt and, and he was in pain. I prayed with him. The presence of God hit that young man. He experienced some abuse in his life and, and he couldn't overcome the abuse. We, over, we forgave the abusers right there on the streets through a prayer. He experienced freedom. And then I asked him after I prayed with him right there on the streets of Baseline, because wherever two or three are gathered in his name, he is there in their midst. I go, how do you feel? She, he said, I feel the power of God. And he goes, can't you see? I'm shaken. And he was radically shaken. What was happening? That young man was experiencing a radical transformation by the power of God's Spirit. And all it took was two people gathered in his name and his presence was there. Gathering. So this is a condition for the presence of God. See, when we're in fellowship with each other, we're in fellowship with God. So when we come together even as a church, this is what we're coming for. Number one reason we come together is this, to, to experience the presence of God. There's nothing like coming to the house of God with believers. Have you ever gone to the house of God and maybe thinking, I don't know if I want to go and I don't feel like it, but you come? And after you come, there's a sense of fulfillment. There's a peace that you go, well, I'm so glad that I came. It felt like God was just speaking to me. Maybe today God is saying, it's time for you to come back to the church. And I know since we've been on, off, on COVID and all this breaks that we've been on, it's almost easy, it's pretty easy to develop a habit of not going to church. On Friday nights, I'm telling you, come back home. On Fire Fridays, 
We're having over 2,000 people that are coming here. It's a safe atmosphere. Everybody's temperature is checked. And before you walk in, you have to put your mask. And then we practice social distancing on the seatings on, and, and sitting down. But we're just making sure there's no excuses to come to the house of God. And this is what I'm hearing testimonies over and over and over. This is the most exciting moment of my week. This is the greatest services we've ever had in the church. And at home, at home you could experience the presence of God as we're talking, but there's nothing like us coming together and experiencing the presence of God as we worship together. See, we can't come together in genuine fellowship without experiencing the power of God. On that Friday, people are getting healed. They're getting set free. People are getting saved. They're, they're getting hope. They're, they're receiving the joy of the Lord that Friday because they're coming into the presence of God. Look at this scripture in 1 John 1, 3. It says, we are telling you about what we have seen and heard because we want you to have fellowship with us. He goes, I'm, right now I'm sharing the word with you because I want to have a relationship or fellowship with you. The fellowship we share together is with God and the Father and his son, Jesus Christ. This is what he's saying. What we share together, when we come together, this is what we share. God, the Son, the Holy Spirit. That means when we come together, the presence of God is there, like he promised. That we are going to come together. And, and there's a scripture in in, in, in with, in Psalms, and it was with David, and it's in Psalms 120. I'm going to end it with this. And David said this, and maybe you've heard this song. I remember we used to sing a song back in the day. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And he said, Pastor, can you sing it? Well, okay, I'll sing it real quick. <laughs> I'm not a good singer, but let's try this. It was, I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. That scripture is that song. And David said that. He goes, I get great joy when believers invite me to the house of God. I love it when they said to me, let us, not me, let us go to the house of the Lord. So why would David be so excited to go to the house of the Lord? This is why he was so excited, because in the house of the Lord with other believers, he would experience the presence of God in a way that he would never experience alone. That means you could experience the presence of God as you're studying the word. You could experience the presence of God just like I was when I was doing God's will. But there's a whole nother level of experiencing the presence of God when we come together as believers. There's an, there's an encouragement here. There's a, there's a love that we experience here. There's healing that happens here. There's faith that's built here as we spend time in the presence of God. So the key to living a fulfilled life is the presence of God. I spent a few, minutes, few hours on the streets this week and I, I, I talked to 12 people and I wrote down every single one of their names. I talked to Robert, I talked to Stan Quisha, <laughs> I, I talked to a young man named Ronnie and I, I wrote all their names down and, and this, is, this is what I found with every single one of them. They needed a touch of God. And they were sitting there at that table and just waiting for a touch of God. Every single person that you come into contact with, you know what they need? The presence of God in their lives. It doesn't matter how much money a person has or things or accomplishments. There's still something missing. And that's why you see rich people that own all kinds of stuff, but they're still miserable. And you're wondering, well, how can they be miserable with that house, with that car, with that wife, that husband? You see them, they get married to, it looks like the perfect person. And months later, they're divorcing each other. And you know what they're saying? You don't make me happy. I, you don't fulfill me. And the reality is, no person is going to fulfill you. No one can. That's a weight and a responsibility that only God can fulfill. And today, you don't need another drug. You don't need to get high one more time. You don't need to spend another, you know, another night watching pornography. You don't need another relationship. 
You don't need, you don't need to make another digit of money. Say, if I just get another zero on my paycheck, that will do it. And you're thinking, and I'm not saying there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with wanting to prosper and move ahead, but none of that will fulfill you. You were created to live in the presence of God. So right now, let's do that. Let's get the presence of God in our lives. And step number one, condition number one, let's get Jesus in our lives. Condition number two was, let's live a life doing God's will. Condition number three is let's come together. On October 18th is what we're going to do. October 18th, write that down, is what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to have church on Sunday morning again. We're having Fire Fridays. Don't miss it. You want to come to Fire Fridays. And then we're also, on October 18th, going to open up the church. We're going to open up our children's ministry. We're going to actually have Sunday services, 9 and 11. We're going to do the Sunday services outside. The children's ministry, we're preparing for your kids, making sure it's a safe environment. We're going to be so safe, and we're going to have a manual on safety that I believe the school district, when they're ready to start and open up their schools, they're going to come to us and say, how'd you do it? And keep everybody safe. It's going to be an amazing event. October 18th, we're going to come into the presence of God. So today, let's end it with this. If you have not received Jesus as the first step, of entering into the presence of God. Why don't we do that right now? And you come the way you are. You're just a prayer away. Let's everybody bow your heads and close your eyes as you're there at home. Let's pray together. Remember, when we pray, we're asking for God's presence to come and answer our prayer requests. God is willing and he's able. Let's do this today. He's knocking at your heart's door. Who's knocking? Jesus is knocking at your heart's door. He goes, will you allow me in? I want to restore my presence back in your life. That's the thing that you're missing. You can't change you. You can't save you. You can't set yourself free. But I can. God loves you. Let's pray together. That's you. You said, I want Jesus. I want eternal life. I want a new beginning. You can have it today. And you could say yes or you could say no. Those that say no, this is what's going to happen. They'll never live a fulfilled life. And number two, if they die without God's presence... They'll be eternally lost in a hell forever and ever and ever. See, when we're out of God's presence, there's no joy, there's no peace, there's no light, there's no hope. It's all gone because everything that's good comes from God. I know you've been searching. The thing you've been searching for is God. You've been searching in the wrong places. Today, God's come to you and says, I love you. I want to give you my mercy. I want to give you my love. Will you allow, your, will you allow me to come in? and save you, and give you my new life, give you eternal life. If that's you, you're saying, yes, I don't know if I were to die right now, I go to heaven, I'm not right with God, there's something missing, I want to be saved right now. Bow your heads, close your eyes, and pray. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I ask you now to forgive me of all my sins. I realize I've been doing life my way. I'm done. I repent of my sins. I ask you, Jesus, to save me. I believe you suffered, you died, and you paid the price for all the sins that I've committed so that I can be forgiven. Forgive me and set me free from all the bad habits. Set me free from depression. Set me free from anger. And fill my heart with your presence, with your Holy Spirit and your love. From this day forward, I will live for you. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. If you just said that prayer, congratulations. Right now, there's a party in heaven. If someone said that prayer and you meant it with all your heart, could you raise your hand right now in your break room, right now in your home, in your living room? Just raise your hands right now. This is you saying, yes, I rededicate my life to the Lord. Yes, I gave my life to Jesus. I'm done doing it my way. I want the presence of God. And if, if someone raised their hand in, their liver, in your living room, I want you to gather around them, pray for them, get their information, and make sure they do this next step. They go online and they go to this website, igotsaved.com. Website, igotsaved.com. God bless you, church. We love you. And remember, wherever two or three are gathered in his name, he is there in our midst. You were created to live in God's presence. 
on a day-by-day -day basis, a moment-by-moment -moment basis, and that's the key to living a fulfilled life. Go ahead and share that with your friends and relatives because they're searching. You have the answer. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only way to the Father. God bless you. Love you. Have a great, great Sunday. And see you Wednesday online and our, and our Fire Fridays. God bless you. And remember, October 18th, we're all going to come together again in the house of God on Sunday mornings, 9 and 11. We'd love to see you there. God bless. Hello, everyone. What a powerful message. And on behalf of the Wayward Outreach, we just want to say we love you. But most importantly, God loves you. And if that word spoke to you today, make sure you help us get this message out by liking, commenting, and sharing this YouTube channel. God bless you all. See you next time.